What's going on guys, it's Melty here and welcome back to another episode of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode episode number 5 I think Here today for the Monaco Grand Prix uh, If you did miss the last episode it was at Spain Very uh, very good race for me uh, Don't think it went particularly well for Aitken but we did score our second bunch of points on the bounce So hopefully we can uh, do the same here at Monaco and get maybe three in a row But we're just gonna have a little look through the R&D right now We uh, we know we can't afford anything only 275 points to our name But we can have a look through see what we're saving up for we've got a durability upgrade coming in for the gearbox I think uh, I'm happy with where the car is performing now uh, and I think we should start investing in a little bit of durability uh, just to keep up with the rest of the field and we're not taking grip penalties a lot towards uh, towards the end of the season but we do have a department event now and it's uh, about a uh, in a live video basically for Jack Aitken uh, it's free acclaim only 50k so really pocket money for an F1 team uh, but I mean that's pretty much all of the admin work done now and as you can see that on the 18th we do have a uh, press interview with Will Buxton but before we do that we are going to go to the facilities and we're going to invest in the chassis facility and uh, get some resource points in uh, just to boost the development of the car even more we want to be at the sharp end as fast as we can here we are in the HQ of our newest Formula One team. We've got an awful lot to talk about, so let's jump straight in. Upgrades to your facilities seem to have stalled. Is there no more room for improvement, or are you prioritising other areas? Well, we'll uh, we've just actually upgraded the chassis facility, but we are going to say uh, we invest heavily in our staff here. They are our greatest, greatest assets, so uh, basically everyone's in a better mood so it looks just like you have a lot of new equipment at your chassis fabrication plant have you been investing heavily in it uh, I would say we're investing more in the aero but uh, yes I guess we have been investing a fair amount it's in the chassis wonderful to spend some time with you best of luck out on track came to ask two questions what a waste of time for him but we are now going to go to the Monaco race weekend and uh, just finish practice see what upgrades uh, we can get uh, I don't think there's a lot that we can do we're being recommended a front downforce upgrade we've already got two uh, I think we should invest in the tire wear upgrade that is there pretty pretty cheap only 300 points but what we are gonna invest in is something in the aerodynamic side of thing I would like to upgrade the tire wear but I don't think it's too bad at the moment so we are going to invest in the front downforce um, that leaves us with only 70 points that's gonna get us get with us just after just after Canada my mic cut out there but uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to quality So just on the start of our outlap now, uh, but if you can see in the bottom right, and it just flashed up on the screen uh, maybe a few seconds ago, it's on the screen again now. The engine is very worn. I made a stupid mistake, forgot to change it uh, after quali. So we will be starting at the back of the grid, but we're going to do a lap set, one lap, see where we would stack up in the field. Uh, but maybe minus a few positions because of the power but it's Monaco uh, power isn't the biggest thing you should be worried about uh, if you ask me it's more about downforce uh, where I'm mainly just the driver how much uh, they're willing to put on the line for a good result but uh, coming through Massonier and Casino Square now being uh, maybe distracted a little bit by the Alpha Tari just ahead through Mirabeau for the first time and the iconic corner of the Laws Hairpin being a pretty uh, scruffy lap very close to the wall on the exit the Alpha Tari uh, not doing us 
uh, the best of favours you see we're getting uh, very very close the walls are a bit uh, closer than I would have liked uh, but into the Nouvelle Chicane probably the heaviest breaking zone on the track locking the front left a bit a bit cutting the Chicane to an extent that we're allowed to and uh, coming round the final corner to the end of the lap short shifting to gain traction and it's gonna be a P2 just ahead of Giovinazzi two tenths behind uh, Esteban Ocon but uh, it's not gonna stay in P2 uh, we're now going to go back to the garage and uh, apparently we had front wing damage for the lap so I must have picked that up somewhere on the out lap that I didn't realise but this was my first mistake clicking the race button instead of just retiring Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world famous Monte Carlo Casino, first opened in 1863. And of course, a certain road race, first held here in 1929. There's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 meters up the hill, past the casino, and then descend downwards towards the harbor through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners at saint -Devot. And don't expect to see much overtaking here today. I'm joined again today by none other than Anthony Davidson, Tell me, Ant, obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between the races. You've been both a test driver and a race driver. What differences are there in the way you approach those roles? Interesting question, Crofty. They're two very different mindsets. I mean, when I tested for BAR, we had full in-season testing where, per driver, you'd cover up to 15,000 kilometers per season. And in that role, it was more about working for the team, trying to help them improve the car and drive as systematically as you could so that that data could be analysed in the most consistent way. When you're lining up on the grid for a race, however, your frame of mind is all about what you can get out of the situation on that day, and the car's the tool to help you achieve what you want. You still want to focus on setup, of course, but it's more about the here and now, getting yourself as far up the field as possible, and less about development work for the future. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Ricardo, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, and Sebastian Vettel, Stroll, Sonoda, Esteban Ocon and Aitken, Giovinazzi, Russell, the owner driver and Mick Schumacher, Latifi, Mazepin, Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton rounds off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So, uh, yeah, the mistake was clicking race instead of uh, retiring because it didn't take us back to the uh, headquarters, if you want to call it that, in Monaco. So we didn't have the option to change the any engine components. So we are starting P17. So to be fair, we nearly did make it into Q2. So our, our pace can't be too bad here, just about where we were expecting. going to take some fuel out the car. Uh, expected a one-stop strategy but we are now building the revs waiting for the five lights to go out and it's lights out and we are racing in at Monaco we get a fairly decent start but we do have to lift to uh, yield to the Alfa Romeo and Williams who are side by side ahead of us but we're going to go three wide momentarily go down the inside of them both and now we're uh, side by side on the exit of Sandbot with George Russell but we've tucked in behind him now on the run up to Massenet we're going to have a little look around the outside but there's just no grip there now through Casino Square Giovinazzi uh, making a little bit of contact with our rear tie there so maybe lucky not to get a puncture as we uh, go down the inside of George Russell into Mirabeau and uh, witness the traffic jam that is Lowe's hairpin that always happens on lap one at Monaco. Uh, everybody's through nice and safely though so no worries about a safety car just just yet but uh, now we just need to find a rhythm uh, tuck in to 
the slipstream of it can on the straight uh, might not assist us too much in the corners but Monaco is uh, it can usually be a little bit of a, a boring race from just watching the cars uh, the walls are so close the circuit's so thin there's uh, only really two op uh, overtaking opportunities into the chicane and sand devot but it's just really difficult to get close uh, as you're, you're not pushing for the whole time but you can't go much faster than what you are because the walls are so close but uh, we're gonna have to make something happen on Jack Aitken here as I feel like uh, I do have the pace uh, if only you know team orders were a thing in the game uh, we could you know order him to move out the way let me buy um, but that isn't a thing so we're gonna have to uh, muscle our way past uh, now onto lap 4 still still behind him through Massinet. Okay, we're reaching a danger point with the wear on the MGUH. Overheating the engine will exacerbate the issue, so keep the temps under control. Now that is not the uh, message I really wanted to hear off, off Jeff. Uh, hopefully the engine can hold out to the end. We just need to keep an eye on the temps, I think he was saying there. But now lap 9, we're 5 laps ahead now, we're getting very close to Jack Aitken here, we're getting a bit impatient as well, stuck behind him, so we're going to line him up into Rasgas, I'm going to go for the Rasgas dive bomb, what an overtake, executed perfectly on the brakes, and now we're going to get uh, our sights set on Yuki Sonoda, we do have DRS, uh, but that is Valtteri Bottas in the pits, uh, and another Alf Terry, I think that was Pierre Gasly, so Mercedes really, really having a bad day. They've got Lewis Hamilton at the back and now Valtteri Bottas making a early pit stop. But we are now very close to Yuki and we're going to stick our nose up the inside. He's very, very polite, leaving us a lot of space there. Side by side through the really, really tight final corner. Yuki narrowly keeping that out of the wall. We did leave him the space. But uh, there you go, there is Verstappen in the pitch. We've got the front runners making their first stops now on lap 12. And uh, there you go, now we are going to be in P3, P2 now at Monaco. Uh, so, you know, it's going to look really, really good for the team Jack Aitken at P5. But uh, this is not our real position, obviously, uh, as the front runners have made their, their stops. We, we haven't. But uh, now we do need to chase down Lance Stroll, get him overtaken before the pit window. Uh, I feel like we were catching him quite considerably. Uh, we did have, I think we had the better tyres or we just had the uh, the fast car. I think in the uh, statistics on paper, uh, we have a similar paced car to Aston Martin. But uh, look at, look who's behind us. Checo Perez already caught up to us, so I think it was about 8 tenths when he came out the pit lane, so that Red Bull, obviously rapid, obviously uh, we're not going to race him, he's completely out of our fight, he's probably going to be fighting for the championship possibly, uh, especially constructors, and uh, we're probably just going to be looking for P6, P7 in the constructors championship, so what we're going to do, we're getting a bit sideways out of Rasgas there, we're just going to let him by on the main straight. Send him as like a homing missile on uh, Lance Stroll. But uh, hopefully he won't kill him. That wouldn't be, uh, won't be very kind of him. So now we're going to stick with Checo hopefully. Uh, or just let him catch up to Stroll. Then we'll catch up when them two are fighting as Stroll. Uh, probably will defend. Try and hold that P1 as long as he can. And Checo already 1.3 seconds ahead of us. Uh, so... That car absolutely rapid compared to our Logitech Season 1 car. And uh, now only three and a half tenths behind Lance Stroll. He is. Uh, can he get him into Sandvot with the DRS and Slipstream? No, he can't this lap. He's just just tucking him behind him in the Slipstream. Maybe have a look at him through Massimo or the... Uh, the casino square and just look at that gap two tenths these guys are nose to tail absolutely inches apart probably couldn't separate them with a bit of paper as uh, they go through the laws hairpin uh, Checo probably getting a bit frustrated uh, like we felt against Jack Aitken but uh, this is working really well for us because they are losing lots of time uh, battling or not even battling I think Stroll's just making this car as wide as possible and Checo has been Checo's been held up by him uh, 
just with the fast car, the fresher tyres, he has every advantage in his favour. But he just can't get the move done because it's Monaco. There's just no opportunities to do it as they go through the swimming pool. The uh, third sector is absolutely flying. You're just so fast through it, especially for Monaco. As you can see, there we're now only a second behind. We're really close in the background shot now. Uh, I think we do have a DRS, so we're going to look, see if Checo can get a move done into Sandvot. This time, no, Deja Vu just sticks behind him again, took him into the slipstream. Uh, maybe maybe have another look into Massonet, but no, he isn't, just sticks behind. I think uh, Checo playing the long game, doesn't want to fight, doesn't want to risk damage or, uh, you know, overcook the tyres. Uh, very experienced driver, I think maybe he's... 11th 12th year in the sport so he really does know what he's know what he's doing especially in that front running car but uh, he does want to be careful because if he keeps being held up by Stroll uh, maybe Verstappen and Bottas who made that really early pit stop might might come back at him and uh, you know just get very close overtake him maybe Checo might lose the win who's which he is obviously fighting for um, in Monaco here, uh, the Red Bull car very good in Monaco as well, uh, usually Red Bull chucking everything at Monaco, they've got the shortest wheelbase on the grid so that makes them very manoeuvrable around the tight corners, uh, but DRS straight again, can he get the move done this time, we're, we've got about half second on them this lap, just uh, preserving the tyres a little bit, we've got about three, four more laps to go on this compound while well, we're going to let Lance Stroll and Checo burn their tyres out uh, so they're going to be very slow towards the end but uh, Stroll is on the mediums uh, I think we're also on the mediums but uh, Stroll is on an alternate strategy I think he's doing a medium to soft so his tyre weight is gonna, gonna be pretty high but lap 20 now we are going to box still one and a half seconds behind but uh, hopefully Jack Aitken does not follow us in. Uh, got that big train behind us and he is in as well. So that is a really, really silly call from uh, Jack's side of the garage. We did say we were boxing this lap. But it's going to be a very, very good stop from, uh, from my pit crew. Uh, can they do the same for Jack? Uh, it's pretty average. Uh, we're ahead of Yuki in P9 uh, behind Antonio Giovinazzi uh, we need to get past him as fast as we can once again to uh, pull away from strokes I think that's ultimately who we will be battling at the end of the race we're going to send it down Raskas again that is the third overtake we've done through Raskas and then it was really it was for nothing we could have just stuck behind him Giovinazzi was in the pit but how were we supposed to know that we needed to get the move done in due time uh, now lap 22 we're gonna look up the road again see how Checo and uh, Lance are doing see if Checo's got any closer to passing the Canadian I would imagine not Lance uh, seems to be very good at defending just from this race alone and uh, here we are two tenths behind one and a half tenths now into the Nouvelle Chicane Checo just sits behind him again uh, but Verstappen now only two and a half seconds behind he's caught up a lot this race uh, now 2.1 catching up tenths and tenths through each and every corner now so sorry I just have a bit of a cold uh, just sniffling a bit so Checo really does need to get a move on get past Verstappen get past Verstappen, sorry, uh, get past Stroll, um, now down the straight again into Sam Devot, can he get him, he's been stuck behind him for about 9 laps here, we'll be absolutely fed up of this, uh, lap 24 now moving on, just coming out of the Nouvelle Chicane, uh, both of them, Verstappen right here, Valtteri right behind him as well, then Carlos, uh, then Charles, sorry, Carlos and Lando, they're all within about 5 seconds, uh, so... You know, Stroll's really not done the Red Bull cars a favour here at all. But now, is this going to be the lap that Checo can get the move done? ERS on, I would imagine. DRS down the straight is going to go round the outside of Sandoval. And what, what a lovely little overtake that is. And is Verstappen going to follow him through a double overtake for the Red Bull cars? He's down the inside into Massonet, side by side through it. And Verstappen is through as well. Now, uh, they're going to pull away, hopefully... Uh, 
for our sake, Stroll can hold up a Valtteri and, uh, you know, maybe even collide. I really, for their sake, I don't want them to collide, but for our race, it would be quite nice. But uh, lap 28, Stroll has boxed and uh, is came out in at P13 and we're about, um, you know, I would want to say about 15, 16 seconds up the road from him, him now. So, uh that long stint uh, really not done him any good, especially on the same compound as everybody else. But we probably need to keep a lookout for him now because he will be on the soft compound of tyre uh, running about 11 laps on that. So he will comfortably get to the end on them while everybody else is on the, uh, the hard compound apart from the front runners who are presumably doing a two stop. But uh, we're flying very high in P7 with this... Uh, with this damaged engine uh, now nothing happening in this race just a big train uh, guys in front extending the gap 10 seconds now between the rebels and and mercedes but we've spun coming in the chicane we've clipped the wall and we've pulled out that was stupid from me we've just pulled out in front of gasly and there is a big pile up at the chicane that is jack aiken george russell and antonio giovanazzi out so that is a safety car, that was some pretty silly driving from me, but now we're going to have two to the chequered flag. Uh, can we gain any positions or are we going to get overtaken by Ricardo Alonso on the uh, better tyres and uh, Ricardo in a ridiculously better car than ours? Uh, now, the uh, there are some lap cut there are not any lap cars what am i on about now we are going green anyway uh, getting a lot of wheel spin fernando and ricardo on the chase looking for some extra points and maybe seb as well wanting to get into the points himself maybe be the only uh, points going aston martin as alonso very close looks to the right looks left there's no room we've covered that off very nicely he got a one and a half second gap uh, in front so those guys are uh, absolutely rapid uh, we're not fighting them though we're just going to settle for 8th position, uh, defend from Alonso and Ricardo, who were uh, obviously going to have a look. Uh, you know, you want to score as many points as you can in Monaco, it is Monaco. The most rewarding GP, but through the tunnel for the final time into the heaviest braking zone of the circuit. And we've locked up, we've gone deep into the chicane, gone over the sausage curb. <laughs> Alonso still there, left him just enough space, and I think... That was his final chance to maybe have an overtake on us this race and uh, we've just about kept it. That was, uh, he really did pressure us into a mistake. Really close call now into Raskas for the final time. Round the final corner now and we're going to come home for a very, very hard for P8. Oh, what a race that was. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. So another fantastic victory for Red Bull today. Tell me Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. Max Verstappen's excellent result today sees him take over as leader of the Drivers' Championship. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I'm going to give it to the owner-driver today. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Red Bull take over as championship leaders. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, Ants, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one.
So that is it for today's episode, guys. If you did enjoy, please like, subscribe, uh, and we are P12 in the standing, 7.3 on the bounce. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you did enjoy, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.